The Battlefield by Letitia Elizabeth Landon 1802-1838 He sleeps. The night wind o'er the battlefield is gently sighing. Gently, though each breeze bear away life from the dying. He sleeps, though his dear and early friend, a corpse, lies by him. Though the ravening vulture and screaming crow are hovering nigh him. He sleeps where blood has been poured like rain, another field before him, and he sleeps as calm as his mother's eyes were watching o'er him. Tomorrow that youthful victor's name will be proudly given by the trumpet's voice and the soldier's shout to the winds of heaven. Yet life, how pitiful and how mean, Thy noblest story, when the high excitement of victory, the fullness of glory. Nor the sorrow felt for the friend of his youth, whose corpse he is keeping, can give his human weakness force to keep him from sleeping. And this is the sum of our mortal state, the hopes we number, feverish, waking, danger, death and listless slumber. Okay, this is a poem by Elizabeth Landon, Letitia Elizabeth Landon. She came from London. She was brought up in uh, Chelsea. She learnt to read it at a very early age. Um, which for uh, education for uh, young ladies at that time was certainly less than um, uh, common. The school she went to was in uh, Knightsbridge and um, Francis uh, Arabella uh, Roden uh, the, uh, the the um, the the teacher um, produced many poets, as in um, Lady Caroline Lamb or Emma Roberts. So, what's this poem about? Well, I'm not completely convinced. Let's see. Clearly, it's about a battlefield and a soldier that has died in the battlefield, but. I also get the feeling that this is the battle of life as well. Um, I think it, it, this poem talks about uh, battles at two different levels. I think it talks about the soldier who has gone to uh, fight for his country's glory and uh, his country have won, have won the battle, but the soldier is dying and killed in the battle. But I also have a feeling that this um, poem echoes the uh, fact that we, in our lives, we fight for the things that we want, the things that we believe. And um, uh, whether we are victorious or not, in the end, uh, life is stronger than than we are, and uh, we end we end up sleeping. So he sleeps. The night wind over or oh, the battlefield is gently sighing. So the soldier is on the battlefield, and the wind is gently blowing there. Um, gently through though each breeze bear away life from the dying. So the breeze is taking away life from the injured or the mortally wounded soldiers on the battlefield. But I also get the feeling that uh, this night wind are the days of our life and our life is gently being blown away by this wind that is sighing. 
He sleeps, though his dear and early friend, a corpse, lies by him. So we can view this that the soldier is on the battlefield and uh, he, is, uh, he is asleep um, and his friend is dead beside him. Uh, but also maybe this is the person that he was in his youth. Though the ravening vulture and screaming crow are hovering nigh him. So he's sleeping on the battlefield, even though the crow and the vulture are calling for uh, him to die so that they can eat him. He sleeps where blood has been poured like rain, another, battle, another field before him. So he's sleeping on the battlefield where blood has been pouring everywhere. But again, the battlefield of life where um, the blood represents the things that he would like to happen but don't. And he sleeps as calm as his mother's eyes were watching over him. So he sleeps relaxed uh, as if his mother, his mother were watching him. So he's sleeping on this battlefield. Um, I, 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 I feel he, th this soldier is dying and he has his dead friend next to him. Tomorrow that youthful victor's name will be proudly given. So tomorrow they will announce uh, his name in the role of the dead. Yeah, um, For the uh, people who have died despite the fact that uh, they have been victorious in battle and his name will be uh, announced by the trumpet and by the soldiers shouting and they will shout his name to uh, to the winds of heaven to heaven that uh, he di he died for his country or his soul died for the things that he wanted to believe in Yet life, how pitiful how, and how mean, thy noblest story. So life, unfortunately, is pitiful and mean. It's sad and mean. And you start with noble intentions. When the high excitement of victory, the fullness of glory. So uh, when you're victorious, you can end up dying. So this soldier uh, has been victorious but and has the fullness of the glory of battle, but he hasn't survived. And here, maybe his um, uh, principles have not survived. Nor the sorrow felt for the friend of his youth, whose corpse he is keeping. So he doesn't feel sadness for his friend, his young friend, whose dead body he is next to. And this can't give him his human weakness force. This doesn't wake him up to keep him from sleeping. So this, um, this youthful promise, this youthful ideas, these um, principles of youth cannot wake him from the sleep he is in. And this is the sum of our mortal state. This is everything to do with living and dying. The hopes we number. So there are a few hopes. But we live feverish, waking, danger, death and listless slumber. So we may have a few hopes, but life is lived in the fear of the battlefield. So, enough. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now. The Battlefield by Letitia Elizabeth Landon